Welcome back! Let's learn about Drupal's page call process and the code of Drupal required to achieve this. The page call process details what Drupal goes through to deliver the HTML you see in your browser. It starts when the server running Drupal receives a request from a client, you know, such as a browser, all the way through to that server returning Drupal's response. With Drupal, the most common HTTP response is a fully rendered HTML page although the response could be in JSON, XML, or other response formats. In performing a page call, Drupal utilizes an architecture where the index.php file acts as a front controller. More specifically, it's a front controller running the Symfony framework. Understanding where and how Drupal leverages Symfony is where it begins to get exciting. With the front controller, for every page request, the browser always refers to index.php to begin the callback process. Everything happens through index.php, as we'll discover shortly. Historically, with now outdated versions of Drupal 7 and previous, index.php was in charge of bootstrapping Drupal to initialize the database, set session variables, and so on. But with the introduction of Symfony, Drupal's bootstrap process is vastly different and exceedingly improved. For one instance, the container running Drupal is cached, resulting in blazing fast Drupal bootstraps. When you loaded your first Drupal page, all of the service information was compiled and saved for quick retrieval. How this actually works is well beyond the scope of this course, but if you're curious, take time to deep dive into the Symfony architecture. A link will be provided at the end of this video in the resources. A reason to understand the page call process is that possessing a high-level understanding of how Drupal responds to a request is critical to understanding the bigger picture. Note firstly, when you create a Drupal module, realize that you are leveraging the rest of Drupal. Modules themselves are not standalone programs. They are pieces of the Drupal puzzle and the Drupal framework will do much of the work for you, but you need to follow its conventions. You need to understand what Drupal is doing to be able to hook into it with your module. Next, be sure to take advantage of Drupal's security framework. Drupal has a lot of security functionality built in, especially when writing to the database with user-provided input. I want to stress the importance of this. You're highly encouraged to leverage the security features of Drupal. Now, understanding the whole page call process will help you do this. As a concluding example, when you create a module, often something will go wrong. At least one piece of code doesn't work. A bug! Now, when you debug code in a module, you need to know what the rest of Drupal is doing during that request lifecycle because it could be another module interacting with your module in an unexpected way, which is causing that bug. Let's look at further benefits of using Drupal's architecture. Traditionally, Web applications were built so that each page of a site was its own physical file. For example, there were index.php, contact.php, etc., and those would all sit in the web root directory. Of course, that works fine for a small application, but for an application with complexity such as Drupal, that traditional approach breaks down quite quickly. There are several problems with the traditional approach shown here. These include the inflexibility of URLs. For instance, what if a manager came along with a new marketing initiative and requested to change all links from news.php to blog.php? Consider the amount of work required to not have broken links. Also, in traditional applications, it was typical to have each physical file manually include some set of core files so that database connections, security, and the look of the site could remain consistent. Problems such as these cascade in the traditional approach, thus making the code base difficult and rigid to maintain. A much better solution to having each physical file provide its own path is to use a front controller. This is a lovely single PHP file that handles every request coming into your application. For example, slash index.php would obviously execute index.php, but a request to slash index.php slash contact would still execute index.php, and so on. With this approach, requested paths are treated like arguments, and those arguments are passed along to help determine what needs to be done. With the front controller approach, every request is handled in exactly the same way. Instead of individual URLs executing different PHP files, 
the front controller is always executed, and the routing of different URLs to different pages of your Drupal application is done internally. Another bonus of utilizing a front controller is that by using rewrite rules in the web server configuration, the index.php is not needed to show in the request. This results in beautiful, clean URLs. This means the client can just go to your domain slash or your domain slash contact or your domain slash blog, etc. And Drupal handles clean URLs automatically. So recall that although PHP can natively handle HTTP request response communications, the raw PHP approach is quite cumbersome, especially with the amount of requests required of modern Drupal applications. Remember that Symfony provides an elegant alternative to using raw PHP. It provides two object-oriented classes that allow you to interact with the HTTP request and response in an easier way. Symfony's request object and Symfony's response object Using the request and response objects are pretty straightforward. The hard part of building an application is writing what comes in between. In other words, the real work comes in writing the code that interprets the request information and then creates the response. To understand the page call process in detail, let's learn more about the Drupal kernel. The Drupal kernel is essentially what prepares Drupal into a usable state. The Drupal kernel is built on Symfony's HTTP kernel class and has been enhanced to add Drupal specific functionality. The Drupal kernel provides a structured process for converting an HTTP request into an HTTP response. This displayed flowchart shows the callback process in detail, but don't get impeded with specifics, as we'll cover each element in detail as appropriate. For now, notice that at step two, most reasonable client requests are resolved, that is, routed to a controller. So now that we have learned about Symfony, let's see it in action by looking at the code of index.php. Remember, Drupal's page callback process is always initiated inside the index.php file. You'll see there are two main classes being used here. Now, don't worry if you have never encountered code like this. At this point, Try to understand the essence of the process that is occurring here. The two classes being used are the Drupal kernel here on lines 11 and 16. And the other class is Symfony's HTTP foundation request component here on lines 12 and 18. On line 16, the Drupal kernel is initiated. Recall that fundamentally the Drupal kernel is based on Symfony's HTTP kernel but the Drupal kernel has been modified and extended by the Drupal team to add Drupal specific functionality. So here we go. On line 18, an object oriented representation of the client's original HTTP request is created. This is a request object. Then on line 19, that request is passed to the Drupal kernel handle method. This method is in charge of returning a response object. Now, here on line 20, whatever comes back from the kernel is then sent back to the client. What is sent back depends on the original request. So for example, if the request originally was for an existing HTML page, such as slash about us, then HTML would be returned. If the request originally was for JSON, then JSON data would be returned. In the case of the, the requested page not existing, a 404 page not found error would be returned. Now, obviously, I can't cover every possible response, but you get the idea. Notice that this process is always the same and is used for every page request. Whether you, you visit your site at slash about us or slash node slash nine or slash contact, Drupal always begins with index.php. As you can see here, index.php always creates a request object on line 18 and then passes it to the Drupal kernel on line 19 then whatever response comes back from the kernel is then sent back to the client on line 20. I encourage you to go ahead and open Drupal's top level index.php. The location of this file can vary slightly depending upon how Drupal was initially installed. If you have, like me, use Composer along with the recommended project Composer template, the index.php file will be located in the web directory. Again, remember there are two classes being used in index.php, the HTTP foundation request component defined by Symfony and the Drupal kernel class defined by Drupal core. 
By now, we have seen how your Drupal application uses a front controller to talk to the Drupal kernel. The kernel is responsible for handling each incoming request and figuring out what to do with it. To detail this page call process further, incoming requests are interpreted by the routing component of the Drupal kernel and then passed to PHP functions which ultimately return response objects. This may not make sense yet, but as we keep learning, you'll understand more about routes and controllers. These are the two fundamental parts of creating a page. Here's a quick summary of the fundamentals we've learned so far. A client sends a text HTTP request, and then each request executes the same single file called a front controller. The front controller boots the Drupal framework and passes along the request information. Internally, the Drupal kernel uses routes and controllers to create the response for the page. We'll learn about routes and controllers soon. Lastly, Drupal turns the response object into the HTTP response, which is sent back to the client. Great job making it this far. Keep it up. Let's continue our learning by getting familiar with the two critical concepts of routing and controllers. It's the routing component that handles request objects, and it's a controller that turns the request into a response. Although it is request and response objects that flow through the Drupal kernel, at this stage of our learning, it's more practically important to realize that it's the routing component and controllers of the kernel that are doing the important work. The routing component is responsible for handling each incoming request and figuring out what to do with it. Incoming requests are interpreted by the routing component and then passed to a PHP function deemed responsible for handling the request. Now it's those PHP functions responsible for receiving that are called controllers. They receive a request object and generate an appropriate response object. So simply put, a controller is a PHP class containing a method you create, which returns a response. It helps to conceptualize these concepts by experiencing them in code. Let's learn more about the routing and controller concepts with code examples. Note that these examples have been overly simplified to demonstrate the concepts. We first begin with controllers. Here, we have a controller class called My Hello World Controller. Right now, the controller's only purpose is to return a response of HTML, which prints Hello World. That is exactly what the Say Hello HTML method does. Expanding upon our example, be sure to realize that a controller can return various formats. Here, I've introduced another method called Say Hello JSON. It returns a response of data in JSON format. So there we have it. A controller returns a response. It's that simple. Let's look at a route to the Hello World controller we created earlier. In Drupal module development, routes are defined using a language called YAML. YAML is simply a text format used for defining configuration. Let's study the important pieces of this route. Here, the first line is the route name. In this case, the route name is world. Keep in mind that route names must be unique per application. And so it's best practice to begin each of your routes with the name of the module you are developing. In this case, the module name is my module. The next piece is the path. The path that is defined here is slash hello slash world. The path is critical to the routing concept because the route that most specifically matches is the route that gets executed. What I mean by specifically matches is, for example, Let's assume another module defines a route with a path of slash hello slash world slash earth. If the client sends a request for slash hello slash world, Drupal knows to execute the route defined here in my module dot hello world because this path matches more specifically than the hello world slash earth path defined in the other module. This matters when you have variables in the route path such as slash node slash one or slash node slash one slash edit or slash node slash two slash edit etc. If a route match is not found then a 404 response is given. Don't worry if this seems overly complex. We'll cover this and more again as appropriate later in this class. The last piece to point out here is the controller element of this route. Here this route knows to execute the say hello HTML method of this my hello world controller class. So putting this all together, we see that routing and controllers work together to deliver a response based upon a request. It's important to remember that routes and controllers are components of Symfony, and by extension, therefore, components of Drupal. 
As we go through this module development course, we will encounter other exciting and powerful components of the Drupal Symphony collaboration, and we'll learn more about them as appropriate. As we conclude this video about Drupal's process to building and returning an HTML page, I strongly encourage you to get familiar with the basics of the Symphony framework. Since Drupal is built upon it, to master Symphony is to master Drupal. Drupal leverages many of the components of Symphony, and as you become more advanced in your Drupal module development skills, understanding Symphony will take your skills from good to great. To introduce Symphony is to introduce object-oriented programming, also known as OOP. Drupal is developed in modern PHP, and Drupal follows established industry PHP best practices and conventions for object-oriented code. Although you don't have to be an expert in OOP, understanding the principal concepts of it is a prerequisite to learning Drupal module development. Fortunately, there are numerous resources available on the internet to guide you to competency. Although we will cover object-oriented programming essentials in an upcoming video, I encourage you to do your own freshening up on the matter. Specifically, we'll need to understand the OOP paradigms of class, object, method, inheritance, and namespace. Wow, this has been a lot of knowledge covered. Congratulations on making it this far. Take a break if you need to after this. Here's what we've learned in this lesson. Under the hood, Drupal leverages the elegant functionality of the Symphony framework. The page call process can be generally described as follows. Requests always first go to index.php, which is the front controller. The front controller returns a request object, which is passed to the routing system in the Drupal kernel. The routing system is responsible for figuring out which functionality is to be executed based upon the information contained in the request object. There are three primary elements in each route, the route name, the path associated with the route, and the controller of the route. It is the controller that is responsible for creating the response back to the client of the original request. So that's all for now. I encourage you to browse the external resources provided. I'll see you again soon. Happy learning.